1971, a famous company uh, wanted to run an ad campaign. So what they did is they asked a young lady, 23 years old, in 1971, uh, in 1971, we can say it was a man's world. I know things have changed, but I know women might still say, it's still a man's world, things haven't changed. But in 1971, things were really different. So they asked this young lady, uh, 23, to run an ad campaign for a renowned brand. Uh, this company had been around since 1909. So this was a massive responsibility. Uh, so the young lady got to work. And she created this famous tagline, a tagline that was inspired from the women's rights movements of the time. And uh, anyone know what the tagline is? Give us more clues. It's a cosmetic company. Because you're worth it. Because you're worth it. So that's where that young lady brought that iconic line, and that line has been ringing true even to this day. It rings. It strikes a chord with all women. You know, whether you're black, white, young, old. I bet, ladies, if I look at your makeup and all that, you probably all got L'Oreal because you're worth it. Yes, you're worth it, ladies. Come on now. I am mad at you. I am mad at you. You know, like, who, who, who doesn't want, you know, to be valued? You know, your merits to be seen, your worth to be admired, to be honored. So, yeah, it is true because you're worth it. So, in our Bible passage today, we're going to be in Revelation chapter 5. And just keep that word in mind, worth, because you're worth it. So we're going to be in Revelation chapter 5, so we're going to move quite quickly because we've got a young ones with us. And just a little thing to remember about Revelation is it's got three writing styles or three genres. So the first one is apocalyptic, which means that it communicates in images and symbols. And then the next one is prophecy, that means it's prophesying what is to come. And then also it's a letter, meaning actually this is something that you're to read and apply what you hear. So now we're going to go now to Revelation chapter 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. So this is a continuation of chapter 4. So I think on the next slide we have, you know, just to give you a bit of image, if you, if you, if you want to know what's going on, that's a scroll. But in, in the one in our passage got writing on both sides, and that's one seal, uh, but this one has seven seals. So if you'd like some um, imagery to help you. And then in verse 2 you hear, And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy? to break the seals and open the scroll. There's that word, worthy. So this call goes out to everybody, to anyone who thinks they are worthy to break this scroll open. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look at it. So that, that, that's just code for in all of the universe, no one could be found who was worthy to open that scroll. Ladies, even you couldn't open that scroll. You're still worth it though, but not worthy to open the scroll. So then in verse 4, I wept and wept. This is John the writer. I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside of it. On December 2, 2015, in San Bernardino, California, two terrorists opened fire on innocent people who were having a party. 14 people were killed and 22 of them injured. And then the two terrorists were themselves shot by the police in a police shootout. And then in the investigation that ensued after this event, the FBI got hold of the iPhone 
of one of the attackers. But then there was one problem. They could not open the iPhone. They could not unlock this iPhone. So they went to Apple and asked Apple to help them to open this phone, to create some sort of back way to open the phone, to hack the phone. And Apple being Apple, they said no, because of privacy. So now the FBI are left with this phone that they could not open. I don't know if they wept because they couldn't open the phone, but um, they could not open the phone. So then we go ahead in verse 5. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. And at that point, you should be wondering, who is this lion of Judah? Who is this root? Who has triumphed? And who is able and worthy to open the scroll? So there, the tribe of Judah comes from Genesis verse 49, where it's talking about kingship and ruling. And then the root of David comes from the book of Isaiah, where you hear of the root of Jesse, where it's talking about the Messiah who's to come. But Jesse has been substituted for David. And this root, this lion, has conquered. So what is the identity of this lion? And verse 6 tells us, that I saw a lamb looking as if he had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So now... It seems like John initially, he heard the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. But when he looked, what he saw was a lamb, a lamb who had been slain. So then the question becomes, who is this lamb? And the writer, John, in one of his earlier writings, tells us who this lamb is in John chapter 1 verse 27 to 29. He is the one he is the one who comes after me the straps of whose sandals I'm not worthy to untie. There's that word again. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said look the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So let's try and put all this together, right, with our scene from Revelation. The idea is who's worthy? Who has the authority? Who has the ability? Who has the willingness to open the scroll? And if you're like me, some of you are probably going, what's in the scroll? We need to understand what's in the scroll. If you've ever watched that movie, A Seven with Brad Pitt, where Brad Pitt's character, yeah, was that to Morgan Freeman's character, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? But in the movie, they actually never tell you what's in the box. They leave it to your imagination. So similar to me, I'm not going to tell you what's in the scroll. Because what is important right now, as of our sermon, is... Who is worthy to open the scroll? If you want to know what's in the scroll, then you're going to read from chapter 8 onwards. But I'm not going to tell you. So, this lamb is worthy to open the scroll. And in verse 8, look what happens when he opens the scroll. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Uh, Ray, uh, Ray was just talking about uh, the prayer meetings. 
Um, prayer meetings are so important. Prayer is so important. It's not just like a, a side thing that you do. Like even in this vision of heaven, you're hearing that, you know, your prayers are there. So especially if you're having a difficult time right now, do not give up on prayer. You should keep praying because your prayers are being heard. They're being heard at the throne. So keep on praying. But one thing that I do want to, to, for us to contemplate here is, so this Lamb of God, Jesus, he is being worshipped in the same manner as he who sits upon a throne. So in the previous chapter, in chapter, in, in chapter, no, I'm going to read in this chapter, in chapter 5 verse 12. Did you hear this? In a loud voice they were singing, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. But compare that to chapter 4. Where praise is being given to he who sits upon a throne, and he who sits upon the throne is God the Father. So in Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, you hear, he is, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory, honor, power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. And then in Revelation 5, 13, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. So the Lamb is receiving the same worship as he who sits on the throne. What must that tell us? What must that tell us about the Lamb? One writer puts it this way. No created being, no created being, only God possesses the worthiness and authority to open the scroll. No created being could open that scroll. Only God. So that must tell us that the Lamb of God is God. The Lamb of God who's receiving the same worship as he who sits upon the throne is God. Now we're talking about the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. This is mind-bending stuff. There is one God in three persons. There's not three gods. There's not three deities. It is one God. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father. But the Father is God. The Son is God. The Spirit is God. This is stuff that you, we cannot figure it out in our own heads, but it is something that should bring us to worship. And even in this chapter, this is what you're going to see. And as I'm going to read the rest of the chapter, I just want you to listen out for the, incre the increasing audience that's giving praise and honor and glory to the Lamb and to he who sits upon the throne. You start off with the four living creatures, and then 24 elders, and then you've got thousands upon thousands of angelic beings, and it goes to 10,000 upon 10,000 of angelic beings, and then it goes to every creature in heaven and on earth and on the sea. So as I read just the rest of the chapter, I'm going to invite Paul, who's going to lead us into a new song, it's sort of like uh, one of those songs where when he's singing, we respond. And the words in brackets are this, the words that we sing, that we respond with, and then we do the chorus together. But let me just read the rest of the verse from verse 9. And they sang a new song, and we're going to be singing a new song today. You are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels 
numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And in a loud voice they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying to him who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever. Amen. 